Hi Tubes, what is going on? It is time for another update on the Mustang here. It's been way too long since I've uh, had a chance to work on this and, and that's what it's been. I just haven't even, even had time. It's not like I've been working on it and not making videos. Since the last video, it has pretty much sat in this exact same spot. But let me show you what I did. So here's the engine here. Uh, I mentioned in the last video the last video I showed that I had the head off but it was raining pretty hard out here so I didn't want to come out and show the engine but there you go there you have it as you can see we got it uh, torn down just about as far as uh, we can go on this one side uh, and you can see the pistons there you can see there's the, there's a little bit of surface rust that's developed just from from sitting out here and I'm probably gonna have to hone the cylinder because this one is actually pretty bad I mean it's it's only it's still only surface rust but you know uh, I'm gonna have to do something about that before I put it back together so uh, there's that. Here's the old head gasket that came off of it. And to be honest, yeah, I didn't really see anything like super duper obvious uh, indicating, you know, where the, the head gasket was actually blown. But in a minute I will show you what I did find, which was uh, pretty much the obvious explanation for, uh, for the blown head gasket symptoms. Just so you, show you here, here's the, uh, the timing uh, chains. Of course, the one that this one on this side is, is currently still set up. I didn't do anything with that side. And then the other side, uh, I was, of course, I mentioned in the last video, I was going to try and just slip the sprocket off and not take the whole front cover off. But obviously that ended up not working as planned. So uh, I just left, the, left it on there. And one of the guides had to be taken off. The other one's still on here. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That shows you how, how it works. You got two sprockets on, uh, on the crank down here. The inside one chain goes up to that head. The outside one goes up to that head. It's pretty pretty simple. It's just uh, a lot of teardown to actually get to, to this point. But anyway, here's the money right here. <laughs> this uh, this is the uh, the other the original head that we pulled off, and I checked it. I didn't I didn't check it on video, but I ended up checking it with a straight edge. You know, we we laid a straight edge across it, and stuck our fuel gauges in there and. It was good on this side and couldn't even get a thousandth through there or anything, nothing nothing down here. But as you got up to the middle, it, it, at the worst spot, I was able to slip a, uh, a seven thousandths and it was almost to the point where I could even get an eight thousandths uh, feeler gauge under there. And I didn't want to even, you know, if, if, it was, if it was only a few thousandths, there's a chance that I could even not, you know, machined it. I could have just put a, uh, you know, the right head gasket on there and it wouldn't have been okay. But seven thousandths. Uh, wasn't good enough for me, so uh, we got this thing uh, on a mill and milled it flat. And so now this is perfectly flat now. So there's no uh, no reason for any concern about this head. And uh, cleaned it up a little bit too. Got some of the some of the oil and the grease off of it. And so uh, so I'm pretty happy about that. So what that brings us to is the point where we're almost ready to start reassembling. There's two things we got to do before we can we can actually start officially reassembling. Number one is I got a new valve cover gasket for this side. The other side was leaking. I think this side was leaking and there's really no reason not to replace it at this point. Just a couple bolts to pull it off and put a new valve cover gasket on. So we got to take that valve cover off and we got to replace the water pump. I noticed this water pump was leaking a little bit when I did have it running and so at this point in time it would be it would be just stupid to not replace it. I mean right now as as this thing sits literally the process of replacing the water pump is taking out the bolts taking it off and bolting the new one on very very easy right now whereas if I don't replace it now a lot of the tear down that you saw me do to do this head gasket I'd have to do again to get to that water pump so we're going to replace that we're going to take our valve cover gasket off and at that point we'll be ready well we'll prep the surfaces here we'll we'll clean up this we'll, we'll clean up the cylinders and all that and then we will be officially on the road to uh, to, to reinstallation and getting this thing running again. So uh, let's do it.
tidy now. <clears throat> it's been a week since that past segment that you saw there, so I just uh, just dragged Mustang back up here into the shade, and uh, today's the day. I'm, uh, I'm going to try and get as much as I possibly can on this today, and whatever I don't get done today, uh, I'm going to do tomorrow. So this thing's going to start either to today or tomorrow. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to show some of this stuff in more detail uh, than other stuff. A lot of the teardown you guys already saw, so there's no need to detail exactly what I'm doing when I'm putting things back together if you already saw it. But I know towards the end of it, especially where I actually took the head off and, and the timing chain and that stuff, I didn't really cover a whole lot. So uh, that stuff I will go into more detail. I'll talk about how we get this thing timed and uh, all that stuff. So let's, uh, let's get right to it. I'm going to get this thing running. All right now, got our uh, gasket surface all cleaned up here. Got our cylinders all nice and nice and smooth inside. Got a head gasket here. Gonna go ahead and pop it on. They are different. You can't use the same head gasket on both sides. It appears. So I got the right one here. As a matter of fact, we'll go ahead and set it right on here. There you go. Looking pretty good. Got a little piece of uh, plastic caught on there, but other than that. We're golden. As soon as I get that little piece of plastic off there, we're ready to set our head on. Alright Tubes, time for an update here. Been doing a lot of work and not a whole lot of filming. So of course we've got the head on and it was pretty straightforward. You just follow like a crisscross pattern and you torque them down to 28 foot pounds and then you rotate them all 90 degrees and you loosen them all up and then you rotate them, you, you torque them to 28 foot pounds again and then rotate them all 90 degrees again and 180 degrees again. So that's that's your lowdown. And again, the, the sequence, it's a, basically a crisscross sequence, but it's pretty pretty well documented online. But if you do have questions about that, leave a comment, and uh, I'll help you get everything sorted out. As far as the timing goes, I just timed it. This side I hadn't touched, so I didn't even really mess with that. Uh, all I had to do was do the driver's side. And the same thing, timing this engine is pretty easy. People make a, a big deal out of it. But, uh, I mean, this is the first one I've ever done, but I didn't really find it to be too hard. All I did was set the crank at 9 o'clock so that all the pistons were down low enough I didn't have to worry about valves hitting them, and then uh, lined up the marks. What you do is there's a colored link on each chain. It's kind of hard to see, though. Even if you can't see those links, it's easy to just mark them yourself because you just lay the chain out and mar make the marks and, then, and line them up. There's a mark on, the, on that sprocket and a mark on that sprocket. And that's really all there is to it. And again, it's pretty well documented online. I found all the information on there and didn't really have a problem. But if anybody's struggling and you're watching this video hoping to uh, find out how to do that, leave a comment. I'll help you out with that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put the timing cover on now. And uh, then we can probably put the valve covers on. And uh, we'll go from there. So stand by. Alright, tubes. Getting pretty close to dark here. So I think I'm going to uh, call this quitting time, at least for tonight. Uh, all the bolts that actually hold the timing cover are on. You can see there's more bolts, but those are to hold accessories on. So as far as these studs here and these bolts and all the bolts that actually hold the cover on, they're all in. Valve covers are on uh, on both sides. This side is a little easier than that side. That one, the back bolts are a real pain. But anyway, uh, we're at a pretty good stopping point here. I mean, now we just have to put the rest of the accessories on. Uh, and the intake manifold and and that's it and it'll be ready to start up so I don't know how long that'll take me to do that's one of those things you think it's not going to take you long at all and then it ends up you're running into you run into different problems so uh, you know I can't make any promises on when this thing will be fired up I thought it'll be fired up today but uh, that's just the way things are so that's where we're at uh, if you guys uh, really think that I didn't show something that, and you're watching this video maybe you know a couple months or years down the road here and there's something that you were looking for in this video, comment. I'd be more than glad to help you out with it. Uh, and obviously if you're watching this video as a subscriber and I just put it up, comment too because I like comments. Give it a thumbs up. Give me a, uh, give me a sub if you haven't subbed already. And uh, that'll be it. Thanks for watching, Tubes. See you later.